over the last few years, we've watched a problem unfold that very few people are discussing. The disappearance of European truffle forests and the frighteningly rapid decline in wild truffles. Around 12 months ago, I made a couple of videos detailing our small efforts to protect these forests and to promote truffle growth. Today, I want to return to our three natural truffle growing projects and see what's happened, what we've learned, and where we'll go from here. Truffle hunters often keep hold of the truffle scraps, the truffle cuttings, to put them back into the land. Now, these scraps seem worthless, but to nature they're gold dust because they hold the key to growing truffles. Thousands, hundreds of thousands of truffle spores. The last decade has seen a boom in truffle research, and as a result, we now understand a lot more about how truffles grow. This is knowledge that we want to utilise not only to help truffle farms, but also to throw a lifeline to struggling truffle populations in the wild. The truffle hunter's occupation has always been a precarious and very unpredictable one, but this is especially true in recent years as we're being hit with hotter temperatures and droughts. So we're also hoping that these ventures will create a new source of income for us, one which will allow us to stay on this path and to continue our lives working year-round with truffles. There are three main projects. The first is rejuvenating an abandoned orchard using knowledge and techniques that we've gleaned from truffle cultivators. Second is repopulating truffle forests, which are under threat from shifts in climate and from overhunting. You might remember some of these places from previous videos and previous years. It's very hard to tell that it is the same place. And the third is recreating a truffle forest on our own land. Let's start here in this orchard. Now, these were not inoculated truffle trees. This was an old-fashioned hazel orchard planted in the mid-1920s. At some stage in its life, it started to produce a species of truffle that grows here locally, the tuba brumale. We discovered the presence of the brumale quite by chance uh, several years ago. So I was out for a walk with my dog and she ran off into the trees and I saw that she was digging. So when I went over to investigate, I realized that she'd discovered a tuba brumale. This is one of the species of black winter truffles um, and it was growing not only at the roots of this hazel tree but throughout the whole orchard. For the first six years this growth continued, however the owners of this land are quite elderly and they could no longer maintain the orchard properly. And added to that, hazel trees can very quickly get out of hand. So in time the orchard had become so overgrown that the truffle yield began to decrease substantially. In an effort to halt this trend, we got in touch with the owners and last year we finally got permission to manage this land. Over the years that we'd been coming here, we'd always scattered uh, truffle spores in this place, but now we could also do the pruning and the ground clearing, which are vital to truffle growth. Okay, so it's February now. Um, this is the old hazelnut orchard which we're trying to regenerate. As you can see, we still haven't shifted a lot of the branches that we were cutting last year, so we've got work to do before spring starts. This was a really big job, and when you have to prune so aggressively, truffle production is usually going to take a hit. But we weren't prepared for how bad this Truba Brumali season would be. This could be due to the weather we had last year. We had very little rain in the six months prior to the Brumali season and very hot temperatures. We do know though from studies that pruning can affect root activity, which will temporarily reduce truffle yields. But whatever the reason, we had hardly any truffles this year, so that was pretty disappointing. But the orchard is now a lot lighter. A heavy canopy and a dark forest floor is not conducive to truffle growth. So hopefully we're on our way to creating better conditions for the truffles here to thrive. 
We'll see how this plays out over the coming years. All forms of truffle growing are long-term projects and as such they're an excellent way to develop patience. And if you'd like to learn how to embrace disappointment, then look no further. Meanwhile, out in the wild, our efforts at truffle dispersal have faced an even bigger challenge this year. For several seasons now, we've been distributing a spore-rich slurry in forests where truffle production had slowed down. Some of these had fallen victim to those vandals of the forest floor, the truffle rakers. Others were areas which have quite simply been overhunted. A lot of them are used by other truffle hunters to make money. They'll do this by selling information to other would-be truffle hunters. This will lead to a lot of heavy foot traffic and after a while there are no truffles to be found. We also target parts of the forest where truffles don't grow but they're close to other truffle producing parts. So these are forests which have all of the growth factors in place but there are no truffles. And finally, we'll distribute spores at our regular hunting grounds at the end of the season, just as a way of giving back. Out in the wild, you can never say whether your efforts have made any difference. If new locations do start to produce, you know, we can't say for sure if it's as a result of our own interventions. It's very tricky to do any real testing out in the forest. But anyway, it, it seemed to us like a worthwhile use of our time and of our spores. This area had shown a lot of promise over the last six years, but when we arrived this season, this is what we found. Yeah, so these are all oak trees that have been put down. The whole area had been logged, and newly producing areas had been raised to the ground. As a hunter, you know these things will happen. You can take care of an area, but but not everyone else in the forest is as mindful of truffles. Some people need the forest for trees, uh, as has happened here. On our trip here today, we haven't found any uh, truffles, which isn't really surprising. So many of the trees have been removed that there's far too much sunlight for truffle growth. There may still be mycelium in the soil in patches. Maybe truffles will still take hold in future years, but at the moment it's kind of a little bit disheartening. You can't be over-reliant on a particular truffle area. This is one of the reasons why we'll keep moving around and keep exploring. This is particularly true in the Mediterranean, where we're really feeling the effects of uh, shifts in climate. Meanwhile, in other areas, our truffle networks do appear to be spreading. This tree, for example, has not started producing yet, but judging by the lovely brulee that's forming, it's only a matter of time. The final project is on our own land. This is half an acre at the back of our house. 20 years ago, we kept pigs here. Since then, we've had an organic vegetable garden, but about seven years ago, we began transplanting hazel saplings from the overgrown hazel orchard where we'd been finding brumale. We've uh, extracted them together with the roots. We're gonna put these into our garden. Now, we've been doing this for the last six years. We extracted these from hazel trees, which we know produce truffles, uh, to give them even more of a chance of uh, producing in our garden. Over the seasons, we've added other trees, various oaks and hornbeam. Some of these were grown from seed in pots, which contain soil with a heavy addition of the spore slurry. The idea was to create a replica truffle forest with the trees and the plants and grasses of the type we would find in the truffle producing woodlands nearby. This land is less than a mile away from the natural truffle habitats. We're around the same altitude, have a similar aspect, and more importantly, the soil here is equally suitable. It has a minimum pH of 7.5 and it's well drained and calcium rich. So this was a great location for an experiment of this kind. And whereas the wild truffles down the road are at the mercy of nature and the climate, here we can tweak uh, conditions, making sure that there's perfect light or shade and that there's adequate water for the truffles to grow, even in the hottest of summers. But the goal here isn't simply to produce truffles. We want to better understand the conditions which would help them to thrive in nature. Truffles play a vital role in, in forest health. 
And what we want to get from this project is more knowledge on how we can encourage the spread of truffles in the wild. Last year we had our first harvest of truffles from our six-year-old trees. And this caught me completely by surprise. You know, commercial truffle trees are grown in sterile lab conditions. The spores they use undergo quality control. The roots are checked under microscopes to ensure that inoculation has been successful. In contrast, our own project was very humble, very random, so my expectations were really low. However, with this shock of our first crop, we began to take the enterprise a lot more seriously. Last year we replanted 200 new hazel saplings and these seem to have taken really nicely. We had a small quantity of truffles for the second season in a row. We also had morels turn up for the first time on our land. Hopefully this is a sign that moisture levels are right and generally that the whole environment here is capable of supporting complex fungal life. Thanks to those of you who got in touch asking for spores, we were able to give away hundreds of packets last year. A lot of you from the US and from Canada contacted me, but unfortunately due to restrictions I can't send spores outside of Europe. Yeah, so sorry about that. Anyway, that just about brings us up to date on our truffle growing projects. As we continue with them, we hope to gain deeper insights into what makes truffles thrive. And of course, we hope that by sharing these insights among truffle hunters and scientists and cultivators, it will enable us to better face some of the challenges ahead for our truffle forests.